So my name's Matt Bailey-Smith, I'm a reader in the Department of Social Sciences. What motivates me is really a really fundamental concern with the persistence of global poverty and what can be done about it. And I suppose what's driven me to be a social scientist and to be a sociologist is, is a really firm belief that it is unacceptable that large majority of the population of the world are still poor. And so that's really what drives me, that was what drove me to become a sociologist, the feeling that, that actually until we understand why that persists and why that's allowed to happen, we actually cannot devise appropriate strategies to do something about it. And so my research is all about trying to address that problem. And so, for example, a lot of my research has been about how development is communicated to people in the UK and Europe, how people in the UK are engaged in international development and justice issues, the work that international organisations like Oxfam, CAFOD, Christian Aid, Save the Children Fund, how they engage different constituencies in a struggle for social justice and a struggle for global justice. And that means that my research is involved in working with those kind of organisations. I used to be an NGO practitioner and that's carried forward into what I do now as an academic. So I like to try and work in tandem with organisations and try and produce knowledge and produce understanding with them. And then that enables me to kind of have a dialogue with the people who are really dealing with the problems that I think are the most important in the world. And so I've been doing work particularly around development education, which is the way in which people in the UK learn about and engage with development, but also increasingly the ways in which we think about how people globally are educated about issues of social and global justice and poverty and, and unequal interconnections in the world and unequal social relationships. And then more recently I've been involved in work with NGO activists in South India, talking to them about their life histories, how they became an activist, what it is that motivated them and shapes their experiences. And by looking at that, we can begin to understand a bit more about how we might be able to work more effectively transnationally as a kind of global civil society to try and do something about poverty and work more kind of in a more, a, a, put a more united front together, I suppose. And then very recently I've been doing some work um, on international volunteering in the gap year. And that partly comes from a belief that, um, or an experience rather, that of talking to so many students, of my own students, who wanted to do gap years, who had to do gap year, had done gap years, but that actually what information is available to them is not very clear, what the right way to do it is not very clear, and there are a number of kind of organisations targeting our students. I kind of felt I wanted a better understanding of how that works, a better understanding of how young people can experience issues of, around international development, and then that's kind of cascaded out into doing more work around international volunteering and actually who does volunteering, why do people do it, how does that connect people to issues of development. And then the way I then try and feed that into my teaching is that kind of, I suppose there's lots of different levels you can do that. I mean at one level it's actually just sharing some of the experiences and challenges and challenges of doing research and, and enabling our students to understand what it means to be a sociologist and what it means to struggle with the issues that you face and struggle with how do you balance these different issues. And I think a really interesting thing has been trying to feed into my teaching how you might work in partnership with different organisations. So what it means to, to work alongside an organisation like CAFOD, for example. How do you develop that kind of relationship? What kind of work set up do they have? How can you connect with that as an academic researcher? And what are the kind of synergies that you can produce? And then at times we've also enabled our students to visit um, India alongside projects that I've been involved in. So kind of as students actually having a chance to come alongside and, and learn about the community organisations that I work with and and, and see how they operate. And then also we design modules which kind of fit around particular themes that tie some of our research together. So for example, the idea of activism and, and what it means to be an active member of a society and a kind of someone who's lobbying for change or advocating for social change or participating in social change, whether it's at a really small level, whether it's in their church group, whether it's just because of their family background or whether it's part of being a, a bigger network. And that then connects the kind of work we're doing to the kind of big contemporary events, so whether it's like the Arab Spring or whether it's like the Occupy movement and those kinds of things.